Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing and for commenting and for sharing uh, what you think about education abroad. And today I have a guest, I have Walker, uh, who's from the United States. And today we're going to discuss the topic motivational letters. Uh, this is one of the most important aspects when you apply for an American or for any other university. And I've gone through this process, I've written I think six motivational letters because I've applied to six universities. And I know it plays an amazing role and very important role in the application process. And we're going to discuss top five things you need to consider when writing a motivation letter. So, Ward, could you please introduce mm -hmm. yourself? So, uh, uh, I'm a, an American uh, living here in Russia, a PhD in uh, Asian, Middle East, Asian Middle Eastern Studies from the University of Pennsylvania. And um, I guess I, we all start uh, in America learning about motivation letters when uh, uh, we're uh, getting ready to even go to a camp. My friend in New York has said that their daughter, who's uh, I think 11, has had to write her first motivation letter to go into a private school. Really? <laughs> so unfortunately, as much as we all hate doing it, it's, a, it's an, uh, an essential part of life and um, it's part, basically a part selling yourself and, and showing yourself to be an, an individual that's capable of doing something is an mm -hmm. essential part, uh, a basic part of American culture. And it's something that at least in the application process that is spread uh, around the world and so that an, almost any English language uh, university will require that kind of thing and many other uh, others. Let's start. I think that the most important thing about, um, about the uh, motivational letter is that you look at it as being part of the entire package uh, yeah. uh, of your uh, documents that you submit. So when you gather these documents together, you've got your uh, exam scores, uh, for the specific ones for your field or, or, or however, whichever um, discipline you're entering into. And you've got your uh, uh, diploma and your grades and your marks, and you have then this uh, other part, you have the application, and that sometimes this letter is attached to. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most detailed thing about you as an individual is going to often going to be in that application where they ask questions like, why do you want to go here? What, what experience do you have? Do you have work experience? What sorts of hobbies do you have? What languages do you speak? Uh, all of those things are in the, in the application. And there's a uh, many students make the mistake when they're preparing these letters that they, they use the application as the basis for the letter. So yeah. that they end up repeating half of, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. repeating half of what is already in the letter. What you need to look at is to look at first at the whole documents and imagine that this person in the admissions committee is looking at you and only knows you from these documents. Mm -hmm. And so if you imagine yourself as a character uh, that's only known through this, what's missing? What is what is there about mm -hmm. you that is not in this package? Your voice is missing actually because you have numbers and you have some, you know, diplomas but you don't mm -hmm. have your voice. And so many, uh, many universities have very detailed uh, uh, application uh, questions that are part of the application. And uh, in that case you need to talk about something else in the letter. Mm -hmm. so that you make sure that the letter is something that supplements the application and doesn't repeat it so that it has new information and the second thing is it's very it's very important that they give you that you get a picture of um, and that this is written precisely to the audience that you are that's going to be reading it as any piece of writing mm -hmm. and that the people who are there who are uh, who are on this committee are are going to uh, be attracted by this document to you uh, as a person and this, uh, this, this is distinguished uh, uh, a lot by where you're going. If you're, if you're going into a bachelor's program or you're a younger student, they are principally interested in, in you as a person and in, in you as a potential uh, mm -hmm. adult. And so it's very important to talk about your hobbies, to talk about what you, what you to show yourself as being a rounded person, mm -hmm. a well-rounded. But that's the, the most common adjective that they look at, is a well-rounded mm -hmm. person. But if you're going into a master's or a doctorate pro, uh, doctoral program, they're very interested in knowing exactly how you're prepared and why, are you, why you are interested in this particular program mm -hmm. and in this particular field. And so the most of the letters should be concentrated on that field. Yeah. And especially in advanced degree, and especially uh, it's important for them to know why, are you, why you are coming to that institution. Yeah, and how would it help you to reach your major goal in life. Right, and how, and how are you going to take that further. Yeah. Uh, so the the audience is extremely important, and uh, you need to, to to gear this. And it's so so it's very important to know about the university you're applying to, to know about the institution, and to give it, to give them a sense that you're going to be ready to 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 go there. 
And that's the, the next point, is that they, they need to see that you are a person who is capable of going to this place. If they, if they for example, see that there's something missing in your, in your mm -hmm. application, it's better to, such as a period of time when you didn't study or a period that you, and that you, can't, you don't see that that's coming out somewhere, you need to explain that as something that helps you be better prepared mm -hmm. and uh, a better candidate for this position. Because they, they have, may have spent the entire process, application process, eliminating others yeah. on the basis of their lower test scores or lower grades. And they've come down to this letter as the way to distinguish you from some other mm -hmm. uh, uh, applicant to reject them and accept you. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, but also I think if you have a low grade, even Harvard admits uh, people with uh, 560 on GMAT when the average would be like 730. And if you use a really strong motivation letter to prove that Harvard is still the place you want to go to, uh, despite of your GMAT score, sometimes it works as well. It, it, uh, it, uh, there are many examples and many cases where, uh, where they give an exceptions to, to, the, to the scores. In fact, a, um, a president of a uh, university told me that they used uh, the scores more to eliminate students than mm -hmm. to accept them. So that means that if they had to choose whom not to accept, they mm -hmm. would use those yeah. scores. But that's the easier process, right, when you just see. So they, the so they, when yeah. they had, if they, if they really wanted a, a someone, they would accept them no matter what the scores yeah. were. Yeah. Uh, so it's a, it, it is a, the scores are, are the simplest way to eliminate students if you have, say, 10,000 applicants. Mm -hmm. And, and then, the, uh, then if you pass that through that process, then the letter is the most important yeah. thing. And in some programs, depending on what you're studying, the letter is more important. Mm -hmm. um, let's say if you're going in engineering, and you, you, they, they learn a lot about what you are and what you've done by the papers you've co-authored. You've co and, uh, and it's really important to present your publications. Um, there, the letter is going to be about what you're doing next mm -hmm. and what your what your further and future research interests mm -hmm. are. And so, it's very important to to focus the the letter in those cases to this place that you're going to learn about this place that yeah. you're going to talk about. We we discussed. Uh, uh, whether you should mention your professors, I yeah. kind of kind this of think that. This is a tricky thing. Yeah. Could you tell your story? Well, the the, the, the issue is that if 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 you mention uh, an individual, because if you, if you want to show that this is the best university for you, uh, you may be wanting to go there to study with a particular professor, with an in, individual person, or to study a particular program, or let's say you're applying to a, a particular uh, department, and but you want to be in a research center in that department, mm -hmm. it's. I, my feeling is it's probably better not to mention individuals and even maybe in this case not to mention an individual research center because that particular professor may be on sabbatical the next year. He may not be there. He may be on leave and they'll say, well, unfortunately he's not there so we can't accept you. We'll have to wait next year and yeah. apply next year. And uh, it's better than to precisely describe what you want to study that, and if they know, uh, they will understand who, whom you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, world experts in the field of, of uh, plant genetics dealing with mitochondria, you know, whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. And they will know what you're, what, what you're yeah, talking what about. You mean. Yeah. And, so, uh, and the same with a center, because they may, all the cent places for that center may be filled. And if they and if you say you only want to go to that research center, mm -hmm. then they 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 may say, well, well sorry, we can't yeah. send you there. Yeah. So it's better to be precise about what you want to study, but leave uh, the individual uh, mm -hmm. names absent. I think. Mm -hmm. um, so there, uh, but in each case, you need to make sure about your audience. You need to keep your audience clear, and you need to keep uh, this this concept that you they are. They are looking at you as a as a, a future person that if you are an undergraduate, it's going to be a future uh, ideal citizen that they're trying to shape, mm -hmm. and that if you're a graduate student, it's a person that's going to go on to do important research that will give uh, glory and honor to the university, mm -hmm. and also that uh, you're going to be someone who's good to work with, mm -hmm. uh, because. Uh, graduate students can often spend spend ten years at an institution, yeah. and if you can't get along with that small group group you're working with, and it's a problem. So you need to show yourself as a real person yeah. that is there uh, to and uh, and so the the letter is there to to fill you to fill the whole application out and to show you uh, for what you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Do we have anything else? So the okay. first the first thing that we mentioned is like sell yourself. Sell yourself. The second thing is to make sure that you that the the letter fills out the rest of the application. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The third thing is to shape shape it to your audience. Mm -hmm. The fourth thing is to show the the place and yeah, specify the place you want to be. Yeah. And the fifth thing is to show you as an as an individual. Yeah, great. Yeah, I think this is pretty much it then. And guys, if you haven't seen my video about writing motivation letter, I will leave a link below. And Walker is now working with us. And if you need any help with structuring your motivation letter or checking, he's an American and he's going to, you know, give you a motivation letter that nice touch. Because sometimes uh, you think in your own language and then you try to put everything on paper uh, in English and it sounds a little weird and people wouldn't get what you mean because this is the way you structure your thoughts. Um, so we're here to help and I will leave a link below. So if you want to schedule uh, the first consultation and you know get our help in writing motivation letters, recommendation letters, we're here for you. And as you know, uh, last year I got admitted to top five American universities and uh, so I also have experience in writing motivation and recommendation letters and we'll be happy to help you. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel and leave a comment below. If you have any questions about motivation letters, please feel free to ask them and we'll uh, get back to you. So thank you so much for Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. bye, -bye.